welcome back to taking credit for it's the spookiest time and wait it's the most seasonal time of year ho ho ho, ho, ho. where it's me scott and, and me Raina. that's Raina. hi uh we're doing dead rising four yes we are <laughs> i was gonna say we're doing the marathon of misfit toys oh yeah, yeah, yeah. well we're the misfits these are the toys that's true why would it ask me these and it showed their email addresses send lucas and matthew emails please Lucas. Does he even watch our videos? Nobody does. Oh, okay. All right, so as you can see, there's uh, like a filter yes. around. Yeah. It's like Christmassy. Yeah, so look, if I hit X. Oh, look, eat your heart out. That's Valentine's Day, but emo, like us. Right. Then there's just nothing. But. Christmas. Here we go. So Dead Rising 4 came out around about Christmas time. I think it was 2017. Okay. And so as it came out at Christmas time, the uh, developers, Capcom Vancouver, under the uh, fuselage of Capcom, uh, released it with a free DLC called the Stocking Stuffer. And the Stocking Stuffer essentially just makes what's already a Christmas backdrop. For, you know, it's wintertime, there's Christmas shit all over the mall, there's fairy lights everywhere. Um, it also makes all of the zombies dressed up in Christmas outfits and adds extra christmas lights so it's a christmas game um so i'm gonna jump in and we're gonna uh looking for a new challenge against your game you adjust your difficulty be warned that doing so will erase your story mode case progress god i hate that case progress no that's fine um i just don't want it to (laughs) blackest of fridays how appropriate uh we're just gonna go normal i think it maintains my character level which is good for me because that'll mean we have less to worry about. Yeah. Here we go. Cool. So this is the first canon game where you're playing as Frank again. Yeah. Frank was the main character of Dead Rising 1. Yeah. And uh, Frank, basically in Dead Rising 2, you're playing as this uh, character Chuck Green who lost his family in a zombie apocalypse, his wife. Uh, Then in the third game, you're playing as Nick Ramos, who's a young man who also has lost. And so in Dead Rising 4, you're Frank returning to Willamette, the town where the zombie apocalypse all began. Okay. Oh, looks like I've just got default tutorial weapons right now. Look at all of these Christmassy zombies. Uh, I totally went the wrong direction, though. It's Christmas time, can't you tell? (laughs) So there's a guy who has voiced Frank West in uh, Dead Rising, Dead Rising 2 Case West, and... Uh, sorry, Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, which was a re-release of Dead Rising 2, where instead of playing as Chuck Green, you play as Frank. And then also Frank uh, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Mm-hmm. And this is the only instance of Frank not being voiced by that same voice actor. I don't know his name, but they recast him as a guy who's actually like a good voice actor, which is great because this guy sounds awesome. Uh, unpopular opinion about that. I really think that the guy that they recast Frank as in this game is, like, a much more affecting voice actor. Like, the other guy is, like, the voice of Frank, and he never won't be that, but, um, this guy is just, like, a more effective voice actor. Yeah. So me and Matt, once upon a time, did a full playthrough of this game, uh, Dead Rising 1, that is, and it was a fun time. Uh, Then me and Lucas played a couple of hours of Dead Rising 2, but um, man, it turns out that locking Lucas down for a consistent schedule is not easy, so that didn't stay. Um, So we never got around to playing Dead Rising 3, we skipped that, went right to 4 for Christmas time. (laughs) Just 
just hear the sleigh bells jingling, ring, jingling too. <laughs> So they insert this, like, young fledgling student friend character. He's, uh, oh, I, I'm not going to spoil it, but he he's, it's mini golf night. Can you tell? <laughs> Have you ever played a Dead Rising game before? No. Uh, the original game, a lot of people fell off of. It came out in 2006 for the Xbox 360, of course. Um, and a lot of people fell off of it because it had this, like, strict, rigid three-day cycle, and time progressed constantly. Yeah. And, like, if you didn't hit certain important narrative bits during the campaign, you would auto-fail. Mm -hmm. So, like, you had to do certain things, and you had to do them on time, or else you'd run out of time, and then you couldn't beat the game. So a lot of people were like, fuck that! This game's hard! But that's kind of why I really liked it. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you played it through and got a certain amount in, you would be starting with that progress that you had, like your level ups and your power unlocks and your strengths and your health and stuff like that. So like then you're way more well equipped to go into the next run. So if you ran through it a couple of times and died, you would be ready to run through it and finish it the third time, you know? Mm -hmm. Which I liked. Yeah. Uh, this game, they removed a lot of features that I really liked about the original game, but they also removed that hard time limit. Oh, okay. Which is good. Yeah. Except that they turned Frank into essentially some sort of, like, hipster. Have I ever intimated that I wanted to return to Willowman? It'll be fine. He needs to relax. Yeah, she's told me to go to school and start. You're the one so in that uh, back and forth in the car there, he disclosed that he is now like a community college photography professor. Yeah. Because in the original game, he was like a photojournalist. Mm -hmm. That's why in that opening scene, the ghost of Frank that was that we were following was like, I've covered wars, you know. Because that was <laughs> yeah. one of his lines. Yeah. <laughs> no. Frank. Ba -dum -ba -dum. We got jokes. I hope we don't get a copyright strike for whatever that was. <laughs> so we're returning to Willamette, the site of the first zombie outbreak, where Frank was on Ground Zero, because there's murmurings of military testing going on mm. Ooh, christmas <laughs> wait 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 all right i'm ground level three this is my story now what you are here to learn remember two minutes ago this is my story you are here to watch and learn how a real investigative journalist does his shit in the field nothing but his notes his camera and his fucking balls you got it Number two, your source said illegal human experimentation, which means there may be some shit you didn't know I wanted to see. What? If that happens, you will stay cool. But I'll get the notes, I'll get the pictures, and I'll get the story, and you'll get out. You want to break the story, you don't want the story to break you. Oh, no Frank. Okay? All right. What's your favorite zombie movie? Goes well, he's a good I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I have one. Really? Come on, yeah. just do it. What's yours? Uh, I got a couple. I got into movies by getting into scary movies, and I got into scary movies by getting into zombie movies specifically. So yeah. I've watched a lot of good ones and even more bad ones. Um, I think Shaun of the Dead is bordering on a perfect film. It's comedy, satire, dark comedy, horror. It's great. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, so I'm level 83 with 39,000 kills, so it did let me keep my progress. Um, but yeah, uh, Shaun of the Dead is amazing. Uh, George Romero's original Dawn of the Dead is also a perfect film. Uh, Zack Snyder's remake of Dawn of the Dead, surprisingly, 
his best movie, I would say, easily. Um, I don't know, I like zombie movies. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot to talk about there. So we're sneaking into the base. It's your regular Metal Gear Solids. Yes. I think, I think there's a sneak. Where's my sneak tutorial? <laughs> Come on. Nothing for, ah, sneak movement. Here we go. Uh, what do I got to do? Enemies are less likely to see or hear you while you're sneaking. Hide behind cover when sneaking up. Okay, but what button do I press to sneak? Well, fine. <laughs> um, in, I think, recent years, uh, Christmas movies that you didn't think were Christmas movies have been, like, a big thing. Like, people always talking about, uh, you know, Die Hard being a Christmas movie and stuff. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite Christmas, not Christmas movie? Do you have any? I don't think I have any because I don't think I, like, watch... <laughs> Like, I don't know. I... Die Hard is like an easy go-to because it's like, it isn't actually a Christmas movie. It's like a, uh, a hard body action film from the 80s. Completely different thing. Yeah. But uh, a lot of people are like, it's the best Christmas movie ever. And it's like, no, it's not. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a bad opinion. It's a, it's a really great movie and it just so happens to have a lot of Christmas theming, but it is not a good Christmas movie. Yeah. No, I don't think I have any from that yet anyway. Mm. A worse photograph, I guess. How about that? I'll take a rank C, whatever. Um, I mean, Gremlins, of course, is kind of a Christmas movie, but not really a Christmas movie. Yes, that's a very good movie. Gremlins is great. Um, the remake of Child's Play with Mark Hamill as Chucky. Did that happen at Christmas? Yeah, you remember there's like the, the bad boyfriend who goes home mm. to his wife and children and Chucky oh, like rips yeah, his yeah, scalp yeah. off using that Christmas was a, lights. That was and, a great movie. Yeah, that was an awesome film. <laughs> Mainly we're now listing horror movies that are Christmas movies like your Krampuses. <laughs> yes, Krampus. Um, Better Watch Out. With Better the, Watch Out was fucked. That was... Almost a reverse home invasion movie. It was really just disturbing. Ah. I picked up on that. I'm gonna beat him up. Got him. Cool. What everybody needs during a zombie apocalypse. A large wrench. Time for zombie murder. Yeah, this is immediately easier than I remember the... Uh, initial tutorial level being considering on the level 83 <laughs> there we go <coughs> bless you and a very merry christmas god he's got combos like a fighting game character Almost as if he's appeared in fighting games before. Also with a thousand health. I think I'll be fine. Right? Yeah, you got this. Is that a oh, delicious bottled water? My favorite. So they changed up the UI in this game very much, where um Basically, in the old game, it was like you would have like a set inventory and you'd use the bumpers to swipe through the inventory. Yeah. And it'd be like, I got this item here, bum, 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 I got that item now. Yeah. And you'd use the control pad to drop items. Cool. And in this game, instead, they've got uh, the up button on the D-pad is to cycle through your melee weapons. Yeah. 
the left button is to cycle through your ranged attack weapons, and the uh, right button is to cycle through your thrown weapons, like your grenades or your Molotov cocktails or whatever. And then the down button is to use your healing items. Cool. So they've streamlined it for combat, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this game also was shit out in approximately one year, so a lot of people have a lot of beef with it. Yeah. But you know what? I like it, okay. It's got some goofy violence. Frank's a likable chum. So we found out not too long ago, like, very specific um, to our tastes that there's a place here in town that just opened up so recently so that they don't even have a website. They've just got a, uh, a Facebook page and a posting on Uber Eats, and that's it. And that place is called Grilled Cheese, please. Yes. And I think you can probably guess what that's good for. What they serve. What they serve. Grilled cheese. It was like a Mexican style nacho avocado grilled cheese sandwich that you had. Yeah, it was good. And a very stinky French style grilled cheese sandwich with blue cheese and Munster and um, caramelized onions that I had because I am hateful of those around me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. They had good jalapeno poppers. Which is just something to write home about. The best. Hard to, hard to come by. Yeah, definitely hard to come by. Bingo. Time to investigate. Seriously, Vic? No. I think this equipment Probably not a disco ball. Bam, bam. bam. <laughs> Worst dentist trip ever. It's not like ageless humor, but I think it's kind of charming. <laughs> so in the Dead Rising 2, Dead Rising 3, and all the other games, Zombrex is the zombie infection depressant. You need to take it once a day, but if you take it, it keeps you from becoming a zombie after you've been bitten. Yeah. So. That's cool. Yeah. My name's Frank, and I use Wrench. Come hang out with me and my friend Vic while we uh, infiltrate your base and kill you. <laughs> you got it. Turn on your night vision filter. <laughs> I'm looking, I'm looking. This is some kind of surveillance room. Come on, let's take a look. I found it. I've surveilled. Do you want to guess who turns out to be the main villain? Physically, she's symptom free now. That's a big improvement. That's her. Otherwise, no change. Uh, Why am I looking at this? Fontaine. We're not improving the treatment with this vector. What the client is expecting is this is a type of project that requires a lifetime of research. Now, the progress you see is... If you can't meet the deadline, Doctor, you'll be replaced. But this one will be others. da 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 Sketchy military experimentation. What do you think, Vic? We're trying to create something. Shit. Frank, we're gonna stop these assholes, right? Whoa, whoa. We get the story, we get out, we get paid. That's what we do. That's all we do. Observe and report. Just like in that one what movie. Always. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a dumb thing you can do. <laughs> Long night to go 
minute, I tell you. Oh, thanks. Oh. Is it though? Why would she ever treat that with anything other than like, shut the fuck up, old man. I don't need to hear about your balls. <laughs> I got one of those. You mess with my camera again, right? You're a quick one. That's what she said. They made a that's what she said joke. We've peaked. We've hit comedy high tower. <laughs> oh, God. Never seen a zombie freak out like this. It's almost like it's 28 days later instead of Night of the Living Dead. Suffering. What, Frank? Yeah. Just zombie the stuff. Is through this chamber. Lure. Drop some stinky meat for her. The stink meat. Interesting. And purge. Goodbye! I'll send your family a Christmas card. I won't. Who wants barbecue? No? No one? Holy shit, Frank. <laughs> this is some atrocity level shit going on here. The best you can do is crack wise? That is unfair. I have photographed things and thought about things. You don't actually care what's happening to these people, do you? Look, let's just get what we came for and get out of here, okay? Okay. Um, more things to photograph. So yeah, they introduced this like Batman Arkham game style investigative like photography element to the game. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah, it's neat. It's not very Dead Rising, but it uh, certainly is a video game thing. Try your spectrum analyzer. It should be able to see inside. Nothing. What are these bastards doing? They're cloning people. Manufacturing fodder for zombie research. Experimenting on them, imprisoning them. This I will take your melon, you thank you. Planet, so please, please, just stay focused long enough for us to get out of here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. Cool. There's someone crying. Vic, we have what we need. Let's go now. Vic, stop. Vic and her bleeding heart. What are you doing? And me and my Dark Souls rolls. <laughs> What a piece of shit. Do you ever hear about that story where a bunch of um, a bunch of investigative journalists went out during, I think it was Desert Storm? It might have been during, actually, a crisis in Africa. But there's basically, one of them took a photograph and it was like a starving child who was like emaciated, kind of like lying down and praying on the dirt. Yeah. And that photograph became very famous and then a bunch of people were like, why the fuck didn't you help that kid? And he's like, it was for the photo. And they're like, that's a fucked up thing to say. Wow. <laughs> and that's yeah, and uh, it's, I'm getting that energy off of Frank right now. Yeah. Now I'm gonna get shot a bunch. Yeah, that's tricky. Yeah. Your lucky chance. Blueprints for combo weapons. Yes, I think I have most of these already. Oh. So they're just gonna go ahead and give me the first combo weapon, which is cool. Um. Yes. 
Nope, not drop. Not what I wanted to do. God, I forgot about this. Combo! Avec Grenade! So, in Dead Rising 2, they introduced the concept of con uh, combo items. Yeah. And it was like, uh, you take two or three things to a workbench, and you tie them together, but you gotta find a workbench. And they did that in 3 as well. And then 4 came around, and they were like, let's make this more of an on-the-go thing. So now he kind of just, like, duct tapes shit together on his <laughs> knee when you want to combo things. That's fun. And then you get uh, items that have much more effective natures. Such as a, a grenade sledgehammer. Just hear them sleigh bells jingling, ring ting jingling too. <laughs> We're snuggled up together, kill, uh, doing stuff like a feather would do. <laughs> right. Definitely how it would work if you did duct tape a bunch of hand grenades to a sledgehammer and you wouldn't just blow yourself up and kill yourself. Yeah, but... You know. Let's grab that other sledgehammer there so we can do it all again later. So one thing that this game really does do, I think, pretty effectively compared to, um, I mean, not, I guess, compared to the other games, but, like, in sort of reference to the other games, is that it, um, it emphasizes inventory management in a big way, where it's like, you gotta make sure you got room for the things that you're gonna combo, so, like, don't hold on to dumb shit just because you, you know, picked it up and thought it might be useful later. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. It's very Resident Evil in that way. And it's not a lot like Resident Evil. So. Pachui! We did it. Oh, did they close the door behind me? Core Blamet, there was a med kit back there. Ah, jeez. Yeah, it's fine. So yeah, you uh, you can overheal yourself too. You see, I've got more than one thousand health out of one thousand health right now. Yeah. Um, if you overheal, you give yourself a boost for a temporary time, but it's constantly decreasing because you can only sit at your maximum health. Right. So shut up, suit up, and clean up. Understood. Sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye, friends. It was nice knowing you all. Have a nice day. Oh, look at that. My bad. Frank's such a dick. <laughs> I did it. I've finally done it. You better be at the car. No. Goodbye, Vic. We've prologued! Last night, Frank West assaulted unarmed guards at a reserve training center in Willamette, Colorado. A countrywide manhunt is now underway. Wow. That's how it- oh, it's actually got a pretty cool intro here with the animated. I forgot about this.
It's a cool art style here. Yeah, it's nice. Like a mixture of 2D and 3D with the 2D animated sprites in a 3D plane. Yeah. God, we love Black Friday around these parts. Take it from me, Scott. <laughs> guy whose day is made worse when Black Friday happens. Oh yeah, and so um, Willamette's uh, shopping center yeah. was the the whole the first game it was like zombies in a mall use anything as a weapon like that was the whole thing it yeah was, they got sued by dead rising or sorry by uh dawn of the dead because it was like hey zombies in a mall is our thing uh, um but uh that's where it happened and so the fact that in this game it's the willamette memorial shopping center is like the grossest skeeviest thing yeah because it's like oh yeah we just opened another mall to remember that one mall where all those people died <laughs> Hank East instead of Frank West. <laughs> Frank West? Am I under arrest? Possibly. Leaning towards yes, but depends. On? How well you work with others. Oh, well, I do. I like to think I'm strong too. Comically speaking, that's pretty good. Wow. I really thought that was over. <laughs> All right, well, it seems I have some time in my hands. What do you want to talk about? Uh, I know who you are. Colonel Brad Park, commander of the ZDC. I'm up on my zombie news. Thank you very much. Zombie you detection well, uh, center? ZDC? Mandate. Maybe? Respond to zombies on U.S. soil. Yeah, it's to combine and silence anybody who knows the truth. I'm all up on it. Thank you. It's happening again in Willamette. What is it? An outbreak. I didn't see anything in the news. How long has it been going on? Over six weeks now. Really? It's a long time to silence an entire town. Time for bed. Oh, it's time for bed. see there you know what I saw nobody knows Frank the only reason I found out is because somebody screwed up and passed me a top-level report this reservist training center I have yet to see anyone possessed by station life all communications in and out of the town are gone hell the satellite photos have been updated in four months it is being covered up. But <clears throat> all that pales in comparison to the mystery of why you, Frank West, are teaching a goddamn night class instead of being two steps ahead of me on this. It's a fair point. You quit. Yeah, I quit. Do you know how many... Frank is dressed like me right now. Green button-up shirt with gray undershirt. No thank yous, no flowers, just a contact book filled with dead people. National Headline Award 2006. The year the first game came out. Zombie mm. outbreak on US soil. Photograph the whole thing. You got some medals, a few letters behind your name. Honorary, of course. Yeah, but let's get to the point. Three weeks later, I tried to expose the Pentagon and the entire U.S. government for their involvement with it, and they bury me! See? This guy can act. Like, he's bringing some chutzpah to the role. Yeah, he's got it going on. Instead of, I've covered wars, you know. <laughs> Which, don't get me wrong, the other guy is Frank West, but this guy's just like, good voice actor. <laughs> breaks this you're in for some big gains maybe even win back something but actually I'm surprised that you let an amateur rip this out from under you 
the hell are you talking about? Guess who that amateur is? She went missing for a year. It's Christmas time again. <laughs> bah, bah. Hell of a team you've assembled. Jesus Christ. Coming up on Willamette. Another thing as a reference to the first game, that helicopter flying in. In the first game, Frank flies in on a helicopter and, and the whole prologue is like the helicopter kind of going down and you like photographing zombies in the streets as you're approaching them all. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, okay. The fact that you're flying back to the Wellnet Memorial Shopping Center in a helicopter. So not to the original game. <laughs> Is it another cutscene? I think you're just supposed to wake up at this point. It might be... You know what's funny? Another thing about the, this game and the first game. The cop that you work with in the first game, his name is also Brad. Oh, weird. They just like that name? Brad Williams, I think, and then Brad Park in this game. Brad. She's like a real alpha dude. Right. It's adjacent to Chad. Yeah. Chad adjacent. Chad and Brad and, Brad and, Brad and Cody. Oh, <laughs> Alright. That's been an episode of Dead Rising for the Christmas Marathon. We prologued and we cutscened. And uh, join us next time. My name's Scott. I'm Raina. Raina's here too. Um, Frank and ZDC director Brad Park arrive in Wilmette, where the outbreak has been raging for six weeks. Next time, zombies. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Sometimes that helps, I hear. <laughs>